Chapter Thirty Three: Promises of Divine Guidance. Your compassionate Redeemer is watching you with love and sympathy, ready to hear your prayers and to render you the assistance which you need. He knows the burdens of every mother's heart, and is her best friend in every emergency. His everlasting arms support the God-fearing, faithful mother. When upon earth he had a mother that struggled with poverty, having many anxious cares and perplexities, and he sympathizes with every Christian mother in her cares and anxieties. That Savior who took a long journey for the purpose of relieving the anxious heart of a woman whose daughter was possessed by an evil spirit. Will hear the mother's prayers, and will bless her children. He who gave back to the widow her only son, as he was carried to the burial, is touched today by the woe of the bereaved mother. He who wept tears of sympathy at the grave of Lazarus, and gave back to Martha and Mary their buried brother, who pardoned Mary Magdalene. Who remembered his mother when he was hanging in agony upon the cross? Who appeared to the weeping women and made them his messengers to spread the first glad tidings of a risen Savior? He is woman's best friend today, and is ready to aid her in all the relations of life. No work can equal that of the Christian mother. She takes up her work with a sense of. What it is to bring up her children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? How often will she feel her burden's weight heavier than she can bear? And then how precious the privilege of taking it all to her sympathizing Savior in prayer! She may lay her burden at His feet and find in His presence a strength that will sustain her and give her. Cheerfulness, hope, courage, and wisdom in the most trying hours. How sweet to the careworn mother is the consciousness of such a friend in all her difficulties. If mothers would go to Christ more frequently and trust Him fully, their burdens would be easier, and they would find rest. To their souls, you cannot bring up your children as you should, without divine help. For the fallen nature of Adam always strives for the mastery. The heart must be prepared for the principles of truth, that they may root in the soul, and find nourishment in the life. Parents may understand that. As they follow God's directions in the training of their children, they will receive help from on high. They receive much benefit, for as they teach, they learn. Their children will achieve victories through the knowledge that they have acquired in keeping the way of the Lord. They are enabled to overcome natural and hereditary tendencies to evil. Parents, are you working with unflagging energy in behalf of your children? The God of Heaven marks your solicitude, your earnest work, your constant watchfulness. He hears your prayers. With patience and tenderness, train your children for the Lord. All heaven is interested in your work. God will unite with you, crowning your efforts with success. As you try to make plain the truths of salvation, and point the children to Christ as a personal Savior, angels will be by your side. The Lord will give to fathers and mothers grace to interest their little ones in the precious story of the Babe of Bethlehem, who is indeed the hope. Of the world, in their important work, 
parents must ask and receive divine aid. Even if the character, habits, and practices of parents have been cast in an inferior mold, if the lessons given them in childhood and youth have led to an unhappy development of character, they need not despair. The converting power of God can transform inherited and cultivated tendencies, for the religion of Jesus is uplifting. Born again means a transformation, a new birth in Christ Jesus. Let us instruct our children in the teachings of the Word. If you will call, the Lord will answer you, and he will say, Here I am. What would you have me do for you? Heaven is linked with earth, that every soul may be enabled to fulfill his mission. The Lord loves these children. He wants them brought up with an understanding of their high calling. The mother should feel her need of the Holy Spirit's guidance, that she herself may have a genuine experience in submission to the way and will of God. Then, through the grace of Christ, she can be a wise, gentle, loving teacher. Christ has made every provision that every parent who will be controlled by the Holy Spirit will be given strength and grace to be a teacher in the home. This education and discipline in the home will have a molding and fashioning influence. Without human effort, divine effort is in vain. God will work with power when in trustful dependence upon him parents will awake to the sacred responsibility resting upon them and seek to train their children aright. He will cooperate with those parents who carefully and prayerfully educate their children, working out their own and their children's salvation. He will work in them to will and to do of his good pleasure. Human effort alone will not result in helping your children to perfect a character for heaven. But with divine help, a grand and holy work may be accomplished. When you take up your duties as a parent in the strength of God, with a firm determination never to relax your efforts, nor to leave your post of duty in striving to make your children what God would have them, then God looks down upon you with approbation. He knows that you're doing the best you can, and he will increase your power. He will himself do the part of the work that the mother or father cannot do. He will work with the wise, patient, well-directed efforts of the God-fearing mother. Parents, God does not propose to do the work that he has left for you to do in your home. You must not give up to indolence and be slothful servants. If you would have your children saved from the perils that surround them in the world. Parents, gather the rays of divine light which are shining upon your pathway. Walk in the light as Christ is in the light. As you take up the work of saving your children and maintaining your position on the highway of holiness, the most provoking trials will come. But do not lose your hold. Cling to Jesus. He says, Let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me. And he shall make peace with me. Difficulties will arise. You will meet with obstacles. Look constantly to Jesus. When an emergency arises, ask, Lord, what shall I do now? The harder the battle, the greater their need of help from their Heavenly Father, and the more marked 
will be the victory gained. Patiently, lovingly, as faithful stewards of the manifold grace of Christ, parents are to do their appointed work. It is expected of them that they will be found faithful. Everything is to be done in faith. Constantly they must pray that God will impart his grace to their children. Never must they become weary, impatient, or fretful in their work. They must cling closely to their children and to God. If parents work in patience and love, earnestly endeavoring to help their children to reach the highest standard of purity and modesty, they will succeed.